Falcon is the SNS wood coaster of Farup Summerland. This is the only modern wood coaster in Denmark, and SNS didn't build many wood coasters, but I think this is their best one. Find out why in this review. After Custom Coasters International or CCI went bankrupt and closed in 2002, Denise Stin was hired by SNS to start a wood coaster division. This division was short lived. They built one Woody in 2003 and three others in 2004. That's it. Falcon was one of the ones built in 2004, and it was the only SNS Woody to be built overseas. This is a pretty short wood coaster, just 66 feet or 20 meters tall, but it has some sneaky airtime. And part of that may go back to its designer. This ride, like the latter three SNS Woodies, was designed by none other than Alan Schilke, who later went on to design the layouts for many of Rocky Mountain Construction's coasters. Falcon runs alongside the edge of the parking lot. A few of the hills can be seen poking above the tree line, but a good chunk of the brown structure is still obscured by trees. The ride is much more of a presence from within the park, as the first few drops run alongside the midway. The ride fittingly has a bird-themed logo, but there isn't any other theming along the course or in the station. The latter is just a plain red building. Falcon typically has a short wait, the shortest of all Faroop's large coasters. Even on a summer weekend, this ride had no more than a 5 minute wait for me all day. It was so quiet that the operator was often granting double rides if the train came back to the station chanting extra tour or one more ride. The operator would ask if anyone wanted to get off, if they did, it unlocked their restraint individually. Everyone else could stay on for a second lap. This ride runs a single train from Gerslauer. The Gerslauer trains on wood coasters in the United States are two benchers, but this one is a three bench Gerslauer train. Each train is comprised of five cars, and each car is three rows of two, so the train can accommodate a max of 30 riders per cycle. Riders are restrained by just a lap bar. It is pretty heavy, so it thankfully will not lower any further throughout the ride experience. There are no other restraints, including seat belts, so you have plenty of opportunity to experience this ride's airtime. The trains are also really well padded, which certainly comes in handy for the next point. Falcon will not be confused as a smooth ride, not in the least bit. Quite a few of the SS Woodies became rough over time. Falcon's drops, bunny hills, and camelbacks are smooth, but it's quite bumpy any time the train changes direction. The train shakes and shimmies profusely. The padding does a good job absorbing the shocks. It also helps that Falcon doesn't carry too much speed any time it turns. I was worried a wheel seat or the very back of a car would provide a particularly brutal experience on this coaster. These are usually the roughest seats on a wood coaster. But to be honest, there wasn't much of a difference between the wheel seats and the non-wheel seats on Falcon. I found every seat is equally as tolerable and equally as shaky. There was a very noticeable difference between the second to back and the very back though in terms of airtime. I thought the very back row offered the best ride experience. There was some really nice airtime in the ride's largest drops. The other nearby rows still get good airtime, but it isn't quite as wild, so definitely wait the extra ride if needed for the better seat, especially since you'll often be rewarded with two laps for the price of one. Once dispatched, you immediately head up the lift hill. You get a nice view of Orcane to your left. You don't get the greatest view to your right because trees block most of the rides, but you will catch a glimpse of some of the taller ones. You'll find yourself at the top in no time. Rather than going straight into the main drop, Falcon is a pre-drop. It's this really shallow incline, and it banks 90 degrees to the right at the bottom. It's not particularly thrilling but it does allow the train to build up considerable speed before the largest drop. The ride then slightly rises upwards, giving those up front a quick pop of airtime. Then you dive right into the largest drop, and if you're in back, you'll get some great floater airtime the whole way down. The train really gets yanked down this drop. Next is a sizable camelback, and this hill gives good sustained floater airtime for all. It reminds me of the airtime you'll get in a B&M Hyper Camelback. It is super rare and very cool to get that type of airtime on a traditional wood coaster. Usually wood coasters give quicker, more abrupt pops of airtime. You then shoot into a tunnel. When you emerge, you head through a turnaround. This elongated turn doesn't offer any positives or laterals, but brace yourself, it does have plenty of jackhammering. 
you'll see the train bouncing and shimmying as you gradually rise upwards. This would be downright brutal with the wrong trains, but I find the shuffling almost comical with all that comfortable padding. You then twist downwards and head over another camelback. This one isn't quite as powerful as the first one, but it still offers sustained floater airtime for all. It still has pretty good power in the back row, but it is noticeably weaker in strength as you sit further up in the train. Next is an L turn. It gives a quick pop of airtime for those up front going into the element, then everyone gets a lateral jolt. This is accompanied by some bumps, but not as bad as the prior turnaround. You then have a shallow ramp downwards that leads to the next hill. At the bottom, you may notice this really awkward transition. It abruptly turns the train 45 degrees to the left with no banking. I expected this janky maneuver to deliver a but instead of delivering a knockout blow, it doesn't offer more than just a gentle jab of laterals. Falcon then coasts over back-to-back -back bunny hills, one right after another. The first of these gives very weak floater airtime up front. In the back, you get more of a sudden burst of airtime in the descent. The second hill is devoid of airtime in all rows, but you do have a nice head chopper as you enter the ride's final element, which is a 540 degree upwards helix. This helix rides much like the far turnaround. The train plods its way through the element, jerking and bobbing. It is too slow to offer any forces. In fact, it feels like the train is going to stall out in valley. But the lack of speed does make the helix tolerable. It's another element that's so bad it's funny. You then roll through the brake run and head right back into the station, ending the 2041 foot or 622 meter long coaster but it's likely not over yet because you have a good chance of getting a second lap. Just remember to chant extra tour and don't raise your hand when the operator asks if you want to get off. So what would I rate Falcon? I would give this wood coaster a 6 out of 10. This ride has some really nice airtime, most notably in the first few hills, especially if you're in the back row. I was in awe how much sustained floater airtime this Woody was dishing out. The ride's turns are a weakness though both from a comfort and pacing perspective. They're lacking in the positive forces. Instead, they just have shimmying. The trains prevent this roughness from ruining the ride experience. While I prefer Phoenix and Line over Falcon, this is probably the park's third best coaster, and it offers a remarkably different experience than Faroop's steel coasters. So those are my thoughts on Falcon at Faroop Summerland. What are your thoughts on this rare SNS wood coaster? Do you enjoy this ride's airtime? Or do you find it too bumpy? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.